What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Kraken Packs MTG. Please hit that subscribe button, like the video, leave me a comment so you can get on the giveaways, and there will be a giveaway right after this video, so stay tuned after for that. Also, this Strixhaven Japanese set booster box is for my Facebook group member, Douglas. He won this in one of the battles we run there. We, we run battles probably, we'll just say nightly, and uh, they're a ton of fun, so if you're interested in that kind of stuff, just join the group. Cracking Packs MTG on Facebook. If you're looking for some magic cards for yourself, check out the affiliate links in the description for Magnolia Gaming. Let's get started. We're just going to open this box for Douglas and uh, I guess get our fingers crossed for a, uh, for a tutor. That's what we're going to do. So let's see what we get. It's interesting these are Japanese packs, but the rares are in the back here so oh right out of the gate big hit so we got i think this is strict proctor and this is a mr t's protection holy smokes right out of the gate big hit and let me see if these are printed in japan i mean i would guess they they would be um they are made in japan so generally the rares are in the front with these but i guess in this particular instance they're not which is okay. And uh, you'll have to cut me some slack on the card names because I am going to struggle with some of these. Uh, like this one, I can't remember. Biomanic Master something maybe. I don't... Close enough. Uh, that is a shock. So far, so good. I feel like this set was more about the Mystical Archive than the set itself. Does anybody else feel that way or is it just me? We got a Snarl. I think people completely forgot there were Snarls. Um, pretty decent little land cycle. That's an opt. And, ooh, this is one of my favorite cards out there. It's Beyond Death. This is Elspeth Conquers Death. So we'll throw that there. So this will be our regular Mystical Archive. This will be our list cards. Rares and Mythics. And <clears throat> our Japanese Mystical Archive will be there. Let me kind of get them all framed up for you. That way you can kind of kind of keep track of what we've got so far. And you know, fingers crossed for Douglas that we uh, we get some good hits. So far, the Mr. T's protection is very nice. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> Blot out the sky, I think is what this one is. And an agonizing remorse. Um, what people don't realize about these Japanese boxes is the print the print is completely different than the uh, the English counterpart, especially the foils. The foils hold a huge premium. But even the normal Japanese archive, look at the glossy coat on these. They look so nice. So I do feel like people are missing out on that. Just check some of the Japanese websites and see what a, a set booster foil demonic tutor goes for. It is exponentially more than one out of a collector booster box. Let's see what we have here. This this artwork feels like it should have came out of like dragons coming or dragon dragons of Tarkir, something like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have a tendrils, and that's a really pretty foil opt right there. Next up. So I don't know if you guys have kept up with the, the newest set, the Midnight Hunt, but there is a mythic that has overtaken Ren and Seven for the most expensive card in the set. And that is the Meat Hook Massacre. So that is a, I think this is a, what is that, Plarg and Augusta? So Meat Hook Massacre, that is a, a very interesting card. Um, like the extended foil is like almost 100 bucks. Pretty wild. Uh, that's a D-Spark. Where are we going to throw this? I don't even know. I've messed up my piles. Here we go. So... I feel like at first the uh, the Midnight Hunt set kind of came out. People were hyped for, like, it was like pre-release weekend. People were hyped, and then the hype had already worn off. And I think now um, there's a little little momentum building with it. So glad to see that. Maybe Standard will be a thing. This is uh, Cross and Grip. Because I, I think for I think for Magic to pick up some momentum and get get back to where it you know, was a couple of years ago or, or, you know, a year and a half ago. 
we, we really need to push standard. Um, it needs to be fun to play again. Also, Pioneer needs to, to make a comeback or have a push for that. So we're in supply shares. And I think it's possible. I just kind of think we're in one of those lulls. Um, I don't know if you guys remember like the Ixalan and Emiket era, but that was really, really bad for Magic too. I'm not gonna say bad, there was just kind of like a, a downturn because people didn't really care for the sets. Uh, that's the expensive uncommon, what is it? Expressive iteration. And uh, ooh, harmonize, these green cards hit different. And now looking back, like people really enjoy the Ixalan and the Amiket block. Ixalan because of the powerful cards, uh, the Amiket block. There are a few powerful cards out of it, but also the lottery cards. So I think we're going to come back to this like this pandemic era of magic. And a lot of people are going to realize how good these cards were. Ah, uh, what is this one? Is this Ephemerate? You'll tell me if I'm wrong. It's all cyclical. I think next year is going to be really big for Magic with the with the sets we got coming out. Um, mainly Double Masters, Brothers War, Dominaria Return. So, really looking forward to that. I think Double Masters more than anything. We get we also get the uh, putting these in. Look at me messing up my piles. I'm so good at that. Um, the return of Jumpstart, so Jumpstart 2 should be interesting. And we're getting another unset that supposedly has Shocklands in it. So, so interested to see how that goes. Blex, this card was hot when the first when the set was first released. Not so much now. Still a good card. Um, Defiant Strike and a List card, and it is a waste. That card goes well with uh, Forsaken Monument. I think that's one card that we can be speculating on because with Brothers War coming out towards the end of next year, I think we're going to see a focus on artifacts and colorless. So, you know, just uh, maybe if you don't have your Forsaken Monuments now, I don't think they'll ever be cheaper, or at least not, you know, in the immediate future. So, might be wise to pick those up. Here we go, it now, it is the thrill of possibility. Oh, baby, there we go. That is a foil harmonize. I'm telling you, these green cards hit different, especially in the Japanese set boosters. Wowzers, let's leave that one, just in case. I don't know what it's worth, but pretty card, nonetheless. Now, typically, <laughs> I, I do some of these Japanese openings. Um, a lot of people, it, it's kind of a niche product. I noticed the videos, uh, they don't do quite as well. I think most people don't care for the Japanese cards, and for some people it's like a flex. They really they really do like the Japanese cards. Um, but, but as far as like YouTube, the interest is really low. I've actually got into opening some Flesh and Blood in the group as well too. But those videos don't seem to do as well either. So I don't think I'll do any of those. This is expressive iteration. No, 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 no. Slow down. Adaptive something. I don't know. I'm close though. I'm all over the place. Foil rare. <laughs> what is this? A Zendikar Rising showcase in the in in the in the the list slot. That's that feels bad, man. At least the artwork's cool. Adaptive. You guys will help me out. It's been a while since I opened any of this. We got Cody. Ooh, Electrolyze. So we're about two-thirds of the way through this box. Um, no huge hits yet. We did get the Teferi's Protection. The Foil Harmonize is really nice. Solid box, though, so, and there we have a uh, stamped foil art card. The videos where I can't read all the cards are a little bit harder because I have to find kind of kind of like random stuff to talk about, right? It's a divine gambit, so just kind of just kind of fill the dead airspace because I don't like to put like a backing track. I know some people like run a really low volume backing track in their videos. 
but not me. I tried it one time and I got the, I got beat up pretty bad about it. But I don't think I did a good job of adding it there. Whoa. That is beautiful artwork on that crescent grip. Love that. And a Beseech the Queen. This was uh, like a 6 or $8 uncommon for a long time. I don't know where it sits now. That's a decent little hit. A little bonus rare there in the back of the pack. Or bonus uncommon. Adding a little bit of value. And, ooh. We all know what that is. That's a Cultivate... So let me know your opinions on Japanese cards. Do you play, or for, foreign cards in general, do you play with them or do you dislike them? <clears throat> I feel like some some cards are okay. Um, like say you have Japanese shock lands or Japanese fetch lands or foreign fetch lands. Um, we all know what those do. It's not like everybody's going to be like, well, what does that card do? Let me read it or let, tell me what it does. I think this one's Chaos Warp and a Horn Sorcerer. Look at that guy. But some of the more complicated cards, I think I think it does cause some issues, especially... Especially, uh, you know, for people that aren't familiar with them. What are, what are your opinions on that? I just, I think staples like lands and stuff are okay, but, but like this card, like, no, I mean, no, you know, some people know what that is, but, but most won't. That's a lot of text for like a fringe card that most people just don't know off the top of their head what it does or what abilities. And we got a dragon, this guy. Um, I'm gonna call this Abundant Harvest. You can tell me if I'm right or wrong. Got about five or six packs left here. Hope you're enjoying the video. Um, I just got a couple good hits out here. Nothing, nothing to be ashamed of. Another dragon, double tap on the Elder Dragons. We got a land, that's an opt. It's been a couple days since I uploaded. I'm trying to get caught up on some things. Uh, probably try to get another video up tomorrow, too. I owe uh, Steve and Corey a battle on a Midnight Hunt set box that they won. So that goes there. This is a Doom Blade. Nothing else there. So we'll probably put that up tomorrow. Or the next day. We'll see. We'll see how this video does. If I feel like this one's... This one's struggling. We'll, we'll throw up another one. Ooh. Ooh. Liliana of Yale. Sheesh. Beautiful card. And a Kazmina out of War of the Spark off the list. Three or four packs left here. Here we go. Uh, Divine Gambit. Two packs. I really appreciate you guys joining me for this video. Like I said, for the giveaways, make sure you're liking the video. Leave me a comment, because that's how we do it. I'll run it through a random comment selector. This guy's big. This guy's good. That's a whirlwind denial. And uh, if you don't mind, hit that thumbs up. Helps the algorithm. Pushes me to the top of the page, so new people can find me. One last pack, Douglas. Fingers crossed for you, brother. What's it going to be? Oh, the Glyph Weaver. This thing is a trunk card in our battles because it is so hefty. Duress. And that will be all. Thanks for joining me. You guys have a good rest of your day. Love your faces. We'll catch you in the next one.